Speaking at the National Defense University on May 23rd, President Obama defined his view of the changing world with national security concerns coming from a narrower threat of smaller terrorist networks, advocating for the continued and expanded use of unmanned air vehicles as opposed to conventional forces in prosecution of our anti-terrorism activities as the best route forward to address this changing security threat. Neither I nor any president can promise the total defeat of terror, Mr. Obama said. What we can do, what we must do, is dismantle networks that pose a direct danger and make it less likely for new groups to gain a foothold, all while maintaining the freedoms and ideals that we defend. Invasions of territories lead us to be viewed as occupying armies, unleash a torrent of unintended consequences, are difficult to contain, and ultimately empower those who thrive on violent conflict. Our actions are effective. Don't take my word for it. In the intelligence gathered at bin Laden's compound, the president said, we found that he wrote we could lose the reserves to the enemy's airstrikes. Simply put, these strikes have saved lives, the president said. Senator John McCain, in reply to the President's speech, issued the following statement. To somehow argue that Al-Qaeda is on the run comes from a degree of unreality that to me is really incredible. Al-Qaeda is expanding all over the Middle East, from Mali to Yemen and all places in between. Listening to the words of President Obama and Senator McCain, one might believe that these are two individuals who disagree on a fundamental principle of war and peace. President Obama speaks as if his administration will fully end our active engagement in Afghanistan and Iraq, cease our current involvement in broader hostilities in the area, and draw down our military. Mr. Obama speaks of reaping benefits from this return to a peaceful footing for domestic programs. Senator McCain sounds as if he believes President Obama is going to do that, arguing that the U.S. should maintain our presence in the Middle East and active war against terrorism. I believe that in reality, these two gentlemen are in violent agreement, with the actual argument not over war and peace, just the amount and type of lethality which the United States will dole out in pursuit of this war on terrorism. Mr. Obama, not advocating for a cessation of hostilities, but rather and only a refinement in delivery of military power. One need do nothing more than follow the money. President Obama's administration touts the fact that 50% of the boots on the ground, the troops in Afghanistan, will have left the country by the end of this year. Looking at the budget request from the Pentagon for Afghanistan next year, you see it is reduced only 10%. Some of this loss of savings is from increased cost of contractors, but much is from replacement costs of UAV operating expense in lieu of personnel-related troop costs. The administration continues forward deployment of units from the Marine Corps and Army inter integrated with the latest UAV platforms along with logistic and training support into Africa from Libya to Uganda as part of both NATO and bilateral agreements. Marine units continue to integrate and expand deployment rotations to the Black Sea while the U.S. Army moves forward with plans for major forward deployment expansion at Pagan Island in the Pacific. President Obama's actions do not, in my opinion, bring fundamental transformation to U.S. foreign policy. They, on one hand, bring to fruition through enthusiastic embrace of UA technologies in the exercise of deadly force much of the DARPA investment from the last 30 years. The global communications net is up and running and ready for duty. Mr. Obama is putting it to its most base use, projection of military force. Rather than a new way, a greater order, or a fundamental transformation, Mr. Obama's executive order setting the rules of engagement for the use of this latest war-making technology rehashes tragedies from human history. Ear. Indeed, the secretive nature of the policies move us backwards, not forward, 
to a time when kings ruled empires. Had a little time They tried to separate us Each and every single time They tried to feed you all these races